Welcome to Tuesday, March 24th. This is what we're watching for you on this Tuesday. Weather-wise, we've got a steady diet of Pacific moisture that's going to continue to flow into the central and northern Rockies, the Great Basin. So this will continue to bring scattered rain, snow, a couple of isolated thunderstorms to the inner mountain west. This is a pipeline of Pacific moisture that, at least for another couple of days here, will mainly impact the mountains and areas west of the divide. As you get east of the divide, well, it's going to be just kind of some scattered showers here and there. However, we're still watching a stronger storm that needs to be watched for Thursday and Friday. It's getting a little more interesting on the computer modeling, especially for the front range of Wyoming, Colorado, and the panhandle of western Nebraska Thursday night through late Friday, and we'll show you why. We'll also give you an update on Comet Atlas, some exciting news with the comet coming up for you sky watchers. First of all, this is where we are right now. The upper level flow continues to have the high pressure in the Gulf of Alaska, but see this flow coming in off the west coast and heading east across the United States. So mild Pacific air is getting pushed in. So most of the nation will be relatively mild. And as you could surmise, the strong jet stream winds coming over the water pushes moisture in. So this is why we're going to have, well, rain and snow over and near the mountains and the showers on the plains. This takes us through Thursday afternoon, and you can see that flow of Pacific moisture is hitting the mountains, hitting the Wasatch Front of Utah, the Sierra Nevada, and we're looking at a little bit of shower activity spreading east of the plains, east of the mountains, especially north of the Wyoming border and points north. We mentioned yesterday that this area was going to be snowy, and really that's how it looks. Spring snow going to just feed just at the right direction into the Wasatch. So southwestern Wyoming, the Wind River Mountains, parts of Yellowstone Park, and the Wasatch Front of Utah will be picking up some good moisture, some good moisture into the Idaho Mountains as well. Now, as we go forward, let's go past Wednesday night into Thursday night into Friday. Then that same storm system right here that's off the northwest coast of Oregon is going to drop south and east, and then we're going to have an area of low pressure move into Colorado. Now we talked yesterday about the fact that this could go through as an open wave, and that still could be the case. But this high pressure ridge in Florida is gonna slow this thing down. And if it does, it may close off. And there are some hints that that could happen. So if that does, we could see more in the way of precipitation getting over the divide and out on the Eastern Plains. Now this is a close up of the same graphic right here. And you can see that we've got the upper level trough. Here's the trough coming into the Four Corners in Colorado by Friday afternoon. This is so very close to becoming something that could end up like this, where you would see a circle with these orange and yellow lines here, which would mean deeper upslope against the divide as the counterclockwise spin gets closed off. But right now it's borderline but we're seeing a trend of this area of low pressure here slowing down. And if it continues to slow down as it hits that high pressure region in the Florida area, well, it likely will close off. We're thinking it might. If it does, we start to see a pattern of heavier moisture forming in the Friday-Saturday time frame right here, getting out east of the divide. If we were to take a look at a new model we're looking at, it's called the ICON model. This comes out of Germany. It's a new model which is showing some promise. Notice as I go back and forth here, the axis of the heavier precipitation is more south into Colorado, into Nebraska and southeastern Wyoming. This particular model closes off the storm. So if this stays an open wave, we'll see a pattern like this. If it closes off, well, we've got ourselves some pretty good rain and heavy wet snow all of a sudden on the table Friday and Saturday. So current forecasts are based on this pattern. If that storm closes off, we've got a much more serious situation unfolding. And we'll update you tomorrow morning. I think by tomorrow morning we'll see that trend if it stays as an open wave or as a closed low pressure system. Update on the sun. We've gone two straight weeks without sunspots. Very impressive. We are now at 64 days of no sunspots in 2020. Now, what's interesting, I went back and I looked at our last solar minimum. 
which was 2009 into 2010. And right as we got out of the solar minimum, we did not have this many days of sun spotless activity. So the solar minimum, which is bottoming out, is still going lower and lower. And this is right here, much less than a lot of solar astronomers were thinking. So our solar minimum continues to, well, get deeper and deeper. Let's take an update and let's look at Comet Atlas 2019 Y4. This is a picture taken a couple of days ago. Uh, look how much it's brightened up. What's exciting about this comet is, is that it is now 15 arc minutes across, which if you were to look up into the sky and see the sun, well, this is half the size of the sun in terms of its relation to how much sky it takes up. Right now, it's a magnitude 8 in terms of brightness. That's still too dim to be seen with the naked eye. But obviously, if you've got a telescope, really even a basic telescope, you're going to be able to find this comet actually fairly easily. And it's already brightening more than expected. The key to this comet will be whether or not it holds together and doesn't break up because it is going to go very close to the sun on its orbit. But it's looking more and more likely as we go into April and May, this comet may be visual See, be able to see it visually without the aid of binoculars or a telescope if it continues this pace and it could be very large. So this comet is something that could be quite exciting come April and especially in the month of May if it doesn't fall apart. It's happened before. We've had bright comets that got everybody excited, then they fell apart. But this one is got a great color to it. It's starting to form a tail. So all of you folks who are stuck at home, maybe you're looking for a hobby you can do at home. Well, if you've got a telescope that's in the closet, in the basement somewhere, well, pull it out. You may want to be using it here in the coming weeks and the next couple of months ahead. This is it. This is a map to show you where it is right now. Find the Big Dipper and go off of this star here in the Big Dipper right here and look off to the northwest if you've got a telescope and you're going to be able to find it. It's making its way through the Big Dipper region, which does make it high in the sky and easier to find. So something to think about and watch here in the coming weeks ahead. Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll update you tomorrow. Have a great Tuesday.